Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome back to the final match of the night. Uh, thanks for sticking with us. And uh, we are going to see who's going to be the final seed into tomorrow's final from Group B. It is going to be VLPS versus Muzzy. Uh, these players have uh, managed to avoid each other so far in the tournament, and here they are. We see Priest banned yet again. <laughs> everyone hates the Priest. It's like, why doesn't everyone just bring Priest, right? Yeah, I mean, if it's, if it's getting banned, right? I mean, those, those have banned, to be the, the good decks. We, yeah, we exactly. talked about how in almost every case it's, it's Druid or Warlock that's banned, but it seems that players playing against VLPS continuous, continuously ban Priest. Maybe it's just these, like, these, it's hard to build a full anti-aggro lineup. So, mm -hmm. uh, like, they just, not a lot of people bring that full lineup, but once you do, it's like Priest might be the scariest one. Once you have the whole lineup, so it's like maybe it's not something you just add into any lineup. You know, you have to bring like Control Warrior, and maybe like Reno Lock or something. Maybe then it'll be a ban. So, yeah, who knows? See? Um, so far, I think the the main deck that I've been skeptical from VLPS is the Warlock. Um, it, it is a combo Reno Warlock with, I think, a few card choices that are a little bit unusual, as are most of his other decks, you know, understandably, and those seem to work. But I have I have the least faith in in the Warlock from what we've seen so far, and um, I think that might struggle to deal with the the standard. Uh, decks that Muzzy has brought, and the standard decks these days are pretty aggressive. Yeah, uh, really aggressive. Uh, VLPS had what, like Alex Strauss in his Warlock, right. which isn't exactly even isn't exactly even that common as far as Reno locks go. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I actually don't love Alex that much. I know there's the like, standard thing of like Alex and them and trying to burst them down to go arcane home, but. That deck is so tempo oriented to begin with, with like Imp Gang and Implosion. Like, you usually do damage before turn nine or whenever you get Alex. It's not really like Control Warrior where you're, you know, not doing any damage with Alex and a Grom and I don't know. So. Yeah. I kind of agree with all your points, but at the same time, I think the design behind the deck is that because you are playing a Reno list, you have much lower of a burst potential. So you want to try to maximize that to as as best mm -hmm. you can with what you have left. Yeah. I think that's why he's running Leroy over Arcane Golem, just that extra two damage. That's sure. probably why he's running Alistraza, so he can put other control decks into range, uh, yeah. where otherwise he might not be able to. So I kind of I kind of get it, but it hasn't worked yet, so I'm, <laughs> I'm pessimistic yeah. about it. Okay. I feel like it has to work soon. Mm -hmm. Plus, there's nothing more satisfying than the Alistraza into the kill the next turn, generally. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. Um, for the other for the other decks, um, the remaining stuff is pretty standard. Um, VLPS, I think, pretty standard. Uh, Elise uh, Warrior. It was Zelly that was bringing the less standard Control Warrior, uh, playing very similar Shaman decks. Muzzy with the standard Paladin. Um, so it should be pretty clear cut matches. Otherwise, oh no, it is Death Lord in the Warrior. That is a little bit unusual, isn't it? Yeah, we saw VLPS's Warrior. He, first of all, when we saw him play Warrior last time, he seems so comfortable on it too, right? He was playing very fast, uh, very like strong play with Warrior against the Rogue. Um, he's playing this Death Lord Fatigue kind of Warrior. Uh, this, I don't think it's particularly good against Paladin, though, is the problem. Like, Death Lord is not a great card against Paladin. I mean, you pull a Tyrion or something, and that's like almost game over sometimes. What do you think of Slam here, just to guarantee the kill on the juggler? Um, because of Redemption, maybe not so much. So he just ends up playing uh, Death Lord to try to force your opponent to trade in. But this is not really going to happen. Like, juggler's just not going to trade, right? It's going to force oh, That's a lot here. of juggles. Wow. All of them hit. And he has kings next turn, so... What is the secret? Noble sack? Yeah. yeah. I don't know. <laughs> One HP Death Lord. Oh man, this is this feels like a really bad spot for the warrior. Yeah, uh, I mean, this, this gets... gonna be it. If he gets a good minion here, this is gonna be it. <laughs> That's pretty good. That's pretty good. It's still six six. I guess not completely what you want to see. Uh, those challengers are pretty important for the 
battle cries, but okay, so I think Muzzy was planning on playing Shredder before, but because of this 6 6, and he's saying that Brawl's turn 5, he's saying, I'm just gonna do the maximum damage I can and hope you can't kill everything because I have so many different threats right now. I kind of like it because of the challenger. I think if it was a weaker minion, he would have played Shredder. Well, this play is obvious that he's gonna run up against the Brawl, so it might just be time to avenge and pass. I play Creeper 100% against Brawl. Mm, I think if you play Creeper, it it kind of amplifies the chance that Avenge lands on a on a one one minion, which you don't want because there's a three three weapon or the three attack weapon. Okay, I can see it being a thing. You just get a lot of a lot more power after roll mostly, unless your Creeper survives. But yeah. All right, so Muzzy just needs. Just needs a big mean to stay alive, that's about it. Shredder. Shredder's pretty big. Yeah. It's not big enough to win immediately. But it's pretty close. There is a shield main. Uh, it's actually looking pretty close. Uh, yeah, the shield main doesn't do anything. No, the shield main doesn't do anything. The shield main's not doing anything because there's too much power on board, huh? Yeah. The LPS needs... Actually, it's so hard. I don't even see a card that could do it. No, I don't see anything. He... No, it's, it's Redemption too. too. Pressure. Yeah, it's just too much pressure through all no, the brawls and no the way. Yeah, it's too much. Wow. It's... Mysterious Challenger with apparently was well, just good enough. Having 6-6 six, six that early, when you can't brawl it immediately, you're getting like two, two hits up. Two hits with the 6-6 six, six is just... I, I really like Muzzy's play of Blessing Kings over uh, Shredder after, yeah. this, after the Mysterious Challenger. It's also the immediate damage. Like, they're both worth four damage, but the Kings does it immediately. The Shredder does it one turn later. Yeah, exactly. And since you already had two big minions to work on, you're not so scared of your 5-5 five -five getting sniped. Right, normally, like, you would not really want a Kings and go face because you know, would just remove your 5-5. Five -five. Normally, you'd want to play, uh, like, a stickier thing like Shredder and maybe Kings later. But in this scenario, he had two big minions. You probably can't remove both, so might as well just play the high power move. Yeah. I'm also thinking, like, what good matchup is VLPS trying to hit with his combo Warlock? Like, I think Paladin may have been it. Like, Combo Warlock doesn't do very well against the Zoo Warlock. I think he's targeting control decks, I think, because it's not great against most of these kind of decks, right? But it might be good against other Reno Locks or, like, uh, an Ethan Paladin. Well, it's probably all right against even even the Secret Paladin, just because it does kind of contest the board a little bit in the early game. It has those yeah. marginal board clears. But it doesn't really have any of that against the other decks that remain. All right, Zoo versus Warrior. Um, the Death Lord should make a pretty big impact, but again, it's going to be up to RNG. Um, we do know that Muzzy is running uh, at least one Sea Giant. Uh, yeah, it might be I, the one I actually. Can. Yeah, I actually don't like Death Lord in this matchup either. I think Death Lord's actually not so good against the most mid range decks like Zoo, Seeker, Paladin, and Druid, but it's good against control decks because you can fatigue them, and it's good against like face decks like Face Shaman. I actually th I think it's kind of a liability against Zoo, and you can't really. I, I think you. I think, I'm not sure, you should not be keeping Death Lord against the uh, Zoo, like in your opening mm -hmm. hand. So. Pretty good. I guess not too great of an opening, but Muzzy's hand is like even though his opening wasn't too good, his hand his hand is very good. Yeah. Well this is a pretty weak Argus, but it's good enough. It mostly gets punished by Execute, which um BOPS does not have right now. Yeah, I mean it's like more it's more about for Zoo's opening against Warriors, it's more about like how to develop a board that's hard to deal with, right? Because if you just play like, you know, flame and knife juggler or whatever, it, they just all die. Like it's like it's the most important thing is kind of start developing minions that could kind of stick around so that you can snowball them with other things. Right? Like that's kind of how Zoo's working here. So he's kind of developed like a sticky enough, kind of annoying enough minion opening where he can kind of get stuff done. So probably okay. start 
What game. do you think about the the death rattle package just dropping on the board here? If he does uh, all, void all walker, mm-hmm. uh, actually I no, don't even have to void walker. Just uh, mm-hmm. creeper and yeah. egg. Creeper egg. I don't yeah. think you're doing enough. If you're basically letting them play like things like minions, like Sludge Vulture and Shield Main and stuff, by not playing any power on board. I like this and playing the Creeper the best. It's sticky enough against Brawl and AoE while developing uh, threats as well. Is it sticky enough against AoE? Yeah, I think so. I mean, this is even less sticky than Creeper. And I think this move. Actually, yeah, I like I like this move here. I, I I think even Creeper is not enough power. Like you're still getting kind of punished by Sludge Vulture. Well, you're getting punished by Brawl for sure here. Yeah. If you don't get Imp Gang boss, it's a clear. Yeah. Good outcome for VLPS. Yeah, that's... Good enough that he chooses not to even hit it. <laughs> I mean, that was kind of greedy. Huh? I, I was thinking he was going to at least play a Creeper, but... Who knows. It's hard to play around both this potential Brawl and Belcher, right? Yeah. I like the non-hit now. Having the weapon still left uh, makes it so you have another good brawl next turn. Oh, yeah. If you get board flooded here... Mm, right now, you can't clear the 1-2 the first, but... Um, I don't know. You just you can, can slam it. You can slam it. Yeah. I mean, this might just be a brawl, not because there's a lot of stuff on board, but because there's just no other way to kill an A8. <laughs> you say, might as well just try the brawl, maybe? Mm. It's not that. I, I kind of like it. Well, you, you break up the A8, the... but it kind of sucks. You'd have to, like, armor up Shield Slam, then attack it with your weapon. Wow, he's... Hmm. Oh, that's pretty terrible. Yeah. Whoa! Holy cow! That brawl save. Yeah, this is gonna be <laughs> this is gonna be a mega value brawl. Uh, assuming that Muzzy actually plays Boom here instead of say Tap and maybe fishing for a power oh, only no or doubt. something. Yeah, have you, if I guess you're you Muzzy, you're like why? Didn't, like if he had another brawl, he would have played it. Mm. I would I would absolutely be thinking you have that. To, you have to. You're not even that scared of the weapon killing day three because yeah, it's eight damage, and you kind of need something after. Definitely. Oh wow! This is gonna be the brawl century, <laughs> and plus this is the second brawl too, right? It's hard to play on both. Yeah. So you're completely out of steam now. You played Doctor Boom and Sea Giant. There's no way you're gonna have enough steam. I feel. Oh point. yeah, no, third? that's fine. Sea Giant lives. Okay. And the Boom bots do enough, so you can't actually kill it. <laughs> you can kill it with Fireworks. Oh, here it's at. Yeah. You cannot kill the, the giant right now. For some reason, it never registered in my mind that, like, a boom or a sea jet would win. Like, in my mind, it's like, okay, <laughs> they're dead. Like, I never even thought that it could win. Uh, probably take Voidwalker here to protect your guy, Taunts. I guess Chill Bear. I don't know if there's a huge reason to take one over the other. Well, one's Demon. Yeah. I guess. Now, if there would be a way to revenge properly, that would be good, but it doesn't seem like that's there's, possible. Yeah, there's no way, unless you attack the 8th through with the weapon, but at that point, why even revenge? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Um, he cannot activate Shield Slam. Well, he okay, can just revenge. Gonna to, he's going to have to revenge armor Shield Slam, right? I think he just has to at this point. You can't take the 8 again. And he has two death spites for AoE, so it's not that necessary for him to save the revenge. Yeah, I like this a lot, and then you death spite here, try to set it up good for next turn. This will pretty much lock down the implosion too. Like, say if you want some implosion here on Guy or something. Lothab's alright. Pretty good. Okay. I was gonna say, if he got that uh, Blood Seal Corsair, man. Right here. <laughs> It's not not actually that low a chance. <clears throat> so let's say you attack the uh, Lothab. How much power do you leave up on board? Do you have the 
You're leaving up a lot of power, actually. Oh, Wait, why do you have he... an attack here? I guess he doesn't. Because you're did. proccing the egg. And so you're actually taking him around the same damage, right? By attacking or not attacking? Hmm. Eight, well, with soul fire and a piece of... He's one six. off. <laughs> I think so. So it's tap first, right? Yeah, I mean, if you're one off and you're in this position and last turn went that well for you. Oh! That's gotta be it. Wow, it's all because of the brawl, 100%. Because of the brawl. Uh, sea Giant getting in another 8. Yeah. Well, it's not just Sea Giant getting another 8, but the fact that he had to even deal, like, he couldn't even deal with it the turn after without making a very awkward uh, yeah. Shield Slam Revenge move, too, so. Right. I mean, if, if the Sea Giant didn't stay alive. He could have just floated a while and then saved the revenge to when yeah, he was going to move to exactly. the airport for the third time that game. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Wow, okay. Sometimes right. just can't miss the roll. Well, Muzzy does not have much faith in this shaman. I mean, he opened with it and he went 0 3, and since then he's kind of held back as the last deck. Um, he, he snuck in the win in the, in the last match that we saw, but can he do it again? He is against another shaman. What I would consider a favorable matchup against uh, a Reno combo lock, and uh, against the Death Lord Warrior, I actually think the Death Lord Warrior is going to crush this Shaman deck. I think so too. Like Death Lord might not be so good against the mid range deck. There's too many scary minions, but against just straight aggro, having a eight health taunt to to attack uh, seems pretty good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's quite uh, quite the climb for VLPS. Oh. We'll see what happens here. Yeah, I mean, just coming back from a zero-two situation is pretty much hard, no matter how you do your decks. So. Mm -hmm. I know that. Um, I know that in the King of the Hill format, it was almost impossible to come back from zero twos. Do you think that's actually changed very much in the Conquest format? I feel like it depends if people really do like RNG stuff or whether they're like, because some people just like like lead paint. Just oh, this opens up your strongest decks, and by the time you're zero two, you know, it's. I don't, let's see, this doesn't make any sense. I don't know. I feel like the way I play Conquest, I, I do make comebacks quite frequently because I'm like still leaving like their like some good matches stream potentially, I guess. But I feel like sometimes it's not true depending on how you do it. So. Okay, so he's gonna play a stickier minion here. He really wants to stick stuff for uh, both Flame Tongue and Abusive, so it makes well, sense to play this. The OPS has the, the choice between Death Lord or Slam to clear. I like the Death Lord. Definitely like Death Lord. This Death Lord's well, not dying here, right? No way. He can he can hit it for six. Yeah. I like hitting it for six. Yeah, me too. I mean, the thing is. A zero three here on your flame tongue doesn't matter that much against the weapon because weapon, it's like killing everything for free in a way. Like the life of your health isn't that important for right now, and the the most important thing is the death or cannot kill a flame tongue totem, right? So, like you're not so, getting a free kill on minions. Positioning is very interesting here. I think if you're playing flame tongue, you should play the abusive to the left because that ensures you'll have minions on either side after the death lord oh, dies. Oh, that's interesting. But he's not playing me. Okay. At least you get the ping in, which is good. I think it's good. Although it probably turns out not even that great. I like the flame tongue better, I think. I like the flame tongue better, too. Like, you don't care about the three face damage of the juggler here. Oh, wow, what? It's going to the revenge play. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't expect the Death Lord to be suicide this turn, but... That seems reasonable, I mean... Yeah. <laughs> there's, there's not much else happening. The LPS is playing the slow and patient game. Alright, what are we going to see here? Death Lord, <laughs> number Another two. Lord. Uh, you... Wow, that's great. And it's really afraid of that spell damage. Yeah. It has to be two spell damage for, for it to even up the leper now, though. I don't know. Hmm. 
Is this where you just go for it? Yeah. Jeez. I mean, you're not taking that much damage because of the, uh... It doesn't do that much damage to Death Lord to begin with. Yeah, but still, like... How do you win this game? Do you play I double Acolyte can... here, or Shield Main? I think both are reasonable. I think Shield Main gets a kill. They might revenge. do Acolyte Revenge. Yeah, the, it sets up the board in such a weird state where he might have to double attack the Death Lord again, and you get an extra draw. I don't draw think it's worth it at all. I feel like I you have so. to play double Acolyte over Revenge, yeah, 100%, because uh, okay. it's only just one more death, one more charge, and you can like Revenge both of your Acolytes, things like that. Wow, not kind of not what you want to see, right? You get well, a charger. Let's see what you get. Yeah. Mm, yeah, that's not terrible. You still have your Earth Shock play. Try to deny some draws. Oh, he's just straight up uh, playing the Flame Tongue here to protect himself against Acolyte. Uh, the Acolyte multi draw, which is, I mean, there's slam, but if he plays slam, the problem is he can't play shield main. Okay, so shield slam is making a super easy decision, I think. Hmm. Yeah, oh. He just wants to draw two cards. Okay, so he's going to bash shield slam and kill the flame tongue with the Acolytes. Yeah, it looks like it. Still in good shape. He's over around 28 life uh, with the shield main and armor up next turn. Also, Sean's contesting the board pretty well. Yeah. You can't afford to give Control Warrior more cards, too. Because they draw the things that are scary, right? Like shield mm -hmm. blocks and stuff and belchers. So. And one of the, one of the only things that, um, that the Shaman can really do to start taking the game is that uh, life tap hero power. Off Sir Finley, and Sir Finley did get Death Lord out. That may have been one of the worst. I think that may be the worst card in the deck to Death Lord out. I think so. Yeah, but I mean, we we did expect the LPS to win this matchup. Uh, this is like his counter. This is when you can't counter pick in Conquest, but then you have one deck left. So yeah, yeah. Just right. too much. Well, Warriors down to uh, thirty-three. Grom might come out here, I think. Or Harrison Jones. Ah, eh, there's like two charges left. <laughs> it's worth it, maybe? I don't know. Just Grom, probably. Yeah, I think I like the Grom. I think I'd even consider just Gromming the Totem, the Flame Tongue. Yeah, because one of the only ways you can lose is Death's Doom Hammer number two, right? So you might as well save the Harrison for the second Doom Hammer. Because at yeah. this point, we have 30 something life. You know that you can't lose uh, without the second Doom Hammer, I think. Uh, so. And you have enough stuff to do. It's not like you need to draw with Harrison. Like you have a whole handful of things that you could do, anyways. Well, why did you do that? That was that was an easy lava burst double attack into Grom play. <laughs> no. No. I don't think so. <laughs> that belongs. Okay. I guess the LPS feels comfortable enough. Yeah. All right. Well, not quite the stomp that Muzzy was hoping for. Uh, VLPS will get his first point on the board uh, after that game, getting a uh, getting a win with his warrior deck against the shaman. Yeah, has Muzzy won with his shaman yet the whole time? Or well, he's in the decider, so he's won at least once. Okay, that's true. I think. Well, I think he's won exactly once. Because uh, his opening his opening match, he just tanked three times with the shaman. Yeah. So I think the shaman is one and four in in the tournament so far. Yeah. Sometimes you see shamans. Uh, I feel like shaman is similar to secret palm somewhat, where some like it feels like it's a really oppressive deck, but it doesn't actually have that good of a results, you know. Mm hmm. Alright, well, it is going to be the Shaman against the combo Reno lock here for a little bit. It's going to be a little bit tough. Yeah. Um, I feel like this matchup is 
a lot of it is decided by whether they have Reno or not. I guess that's pretty obvious, but um, I actually think that this matchup is Reno favored over 50% of the time, but it's very, very based on whether they get Reno. So, mm-hmm. Yeah, it is It is pretty difficult to uh, to understand any form of consistency here. Yeah. Maybe King is a key card in this matchup. You have just so many good trades early with him, King. This is good. Obviously, uh, you play BJ here. There's no targets, and the 4-2 contests the board very well. Um, MC Tech probably has more implications than BGH. But I actually think there's some reason to play MC Tech too. Like, you'd rather have a 3-3 than a 4-2, just because mm-hmm. this is one. The other reason is against uh, Feral Spirits. You'd rather have a 3-3 than a 4-2, but maybe VLPS just thinking a little greedy. He actually wants to get the the steal. Actually, it might, it might happen. I could see my control tech coming down for a steal sometime soon. I think you trade here, right? Oh, no, you don't. Never mind. I think if there's only one, 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 you'd trade. Mm-hmm. How much do you want to play with this uh, MC tech in mind? I guess because you have Dark Peddler, you might as well. Like, if you had nothing else to do, probably you would just have to go for it. But, yeah, with the Dark Peddler, I would just try to hold the MC tech and see what happens. It might kick in on a Feral Spirit's turn, but... It's possible for it to kick in here, right? If he Feral Spirits and Totem Golems, he'll 4. Yeah, I think he is going to probably make that play. He can make a little bit more of an gr- aggressive play by playing the, the Charger, but that seems unlikely. That seems very unlikely that he would charge a 2-2 and play a Totem mm-hmm. Golem here. Because your 2-1, the 1-1 kills the 2-1 as well, your Argent Horse Rider. Uh, oh, he's, well, he's, I think he's doing it just to play around health for a little face. better. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's the idea. Well, here comes the Belcher. Well, I think here Muzzy's gonna just have to play into it. Yeah, I mean, I feel like the LPS has definitely had a good enough opening where he would win the game if he gets Reno before he dies. But you know, it comes down a lot to whether you actually get Reno or not. Uh, we're, we're locked to life taps a lot. We usually do get Reno by some point. I wouldn't be super surprised if there's no Flame Punk here. Because it opens them up to a lot of AoE, whereas he plays Abusive and just... Wow, he's actually playing around Hellfire. But this is so weird, because you're losing too much. I don't think... I don't like this play at all. Wait, that doesn't, doesn't even play, really hellfire. play around Hellfire. Yeah. I, that is a very awkward play. It's just doing bad trades, and it's, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I think he like he was distressed when he made that play. Hearthstone tournaments are serious business. Well, the dagger is not bad here. Well, in this specific turn, and I don't think the other two are going to really help you win the game. Dagger is like the. One of the worst, but these are probably the three worst out of all of them, right? Mm-hmm. Three things that don't help you go face generally. All right. Well, MC Tech is gonna is gonna come down here. I'd imagine. I mean, yeah. he doesn't have anything else better to play. Okay, that's good. At the first, you can play both. Ooh, steals that one. Cannot kill the three two three taunts though. There is a huge flame tongue here, like potential, uh, like propagate through. I'd actually like to see it on the left of that, so you can use the three three to kill the uh, the two three, and then go from there. Mm. Does it matter? It no, actually does I matter. I think this is good. I think this is really? good. Yeah, because he can he can dunk the the spell damage totem and the hero power into that. Basically, set up a very similar trade. Okay. But you must want to get the one three into the two three anyways. I think. See, I don't think this works on nearly as well now. Okay. All right. Well. Yeah. I think Muzzy is gonna have to draw burst because uh, oh, with the ooze okay, now that's gonna that's be hard to good. do. Yeah. Oh, is that a misplay? I think he could have hit for face twice. 
Yeah, that definitely was a misplay. He definitely could have hit face a little bit. Wow, this it's just yeah, there's all, all these slight misplays. Well VLPS misplay is very slight. Muzzy made some huge misplays in my opinion so far in mm -hmm. the scene. Well, there's Leroy, and he's got the faceless, and he's putting him on 15, so it's now or never. If he did draw the Doomhammer, that would have been lethal, and Muzzy would have just sealed that game. Yeah. <coughs> yeah he can still win with Doomhammer, maybe, but... No, no, it's, it's, it's done. It's okay. done. Oh, yeah, That's yeah. just it. It's, it's way it's over. <laughs> it's way over. It's like five over. over. Four over. That yeah. much over. No, it is five over. Yeah. Okay. Okay, it is, this is a little over. Yeah. Forgot how fast Alex Straza could kill people. Wow, and as unlikely as it seemed, we are on match point here. VLPS's uh, Shaman is the last. That's, that's the least likely deck I thought he would leave up. Um, so it's it's actually a, a mirror between Shamans, VLPS versus Muzzy. I think they're playing. Um, I think they're playing very similar style of Shamans, uh, yeah. but. Their history is a bit uh, a bit different. I think Muzzy is one in five with Shaman, while VLPS I think is one in one maybe. So okay. I don't know. Um, it did seem like Muzzy made a few questionable plays there. I I kind of doubt he would have won with those set of draws regardless. But uh, still, maybe he's feeling a bit of pressure here, and uh, that that may may play a pretty big part in uh, in this yeah. final game of the of the night here. Yeah, Shaman or Shaman, though, it's like, uh, if you're on tilt, that's the matchup you want to play, mm -hmm. I think. Like, if you're, if you're, tilted, you don't want, you know, you get more and more tilted as the game goes on, like a long game. Mm -hmm. You just want to go Shaman or Shaman, like, it's not, I'm not saying it's like a super low skill matchup, but at least it's fast, and uh, you might be making better decisions on tilt if you're going to face more. Yeah. Sometimes. Well, all right, we're going to get into that game pretty soon here. Um, before that, I just wanted to mention uh, right as we right as we close up here, um, the uh, the Onog uh, circuit. Uh, they're going to have a pretty big presence at PAX East. If you guys are going, it's in uh, it's in about a week. PAX East is April twenty second and twenty fourth. Um, they're running an event uh, for ten thousand bucks. They plan on having a one hundred and twenty eight man open tournament, and they're going to invite pro players from Cloud Nine. Uh, I believe you're going to participate in that. Are you not? Uh, I'm going to be. I'm going to be going to PAX East. Uh, I'm not okay. sure. I think I'm playing the the other tournament there, but I'm definitely going to be at PAX East. So mm -hmm. if you guys go, I can see you guys there. Yeah, uh, and Archon will also be participating from uh, from what we know. Uh, it's going to be a lot of money on the line and quite a few um, uh, quite a few tournament points. So uh, it's it's something you guys should check out. I think they're going to highlight their app for the event as well, which is a pretty interesting thing. I'm I'm kind of curious how well that will work out. Um, and also, if, if you don't want to participate, if you just want to check it out, uh, people like Strife Crow, a lot of the other Hearthstone players will be uh, around that area, and you can meet them, you can get signings and all that kind of stuff. So it should be a good thing if you're going. Make sure to check that out. Yeah. So this game's... Both players have good openings. Not everyone has uh, options here. Um, seems like this bolt will come down next turn on the Totem Golem for Muzzy. Uh, board's semi-even right now. After this turn, hmm. Do you think Hunter is really that much better than the Druid here, Power? In this match, was kind of weird, huh? Because you're both like trying to race each other, right? So you don't really like is one da is, is two damage on them better? Or is getting one damage on them one armor for you better? I don't know. In a way, mathematically, Druid's better, huh? Because mm -hmm. with Doomhammer, you get two damage and the one armor. And you can so also, maybe... well, with Druid, you can just kind of initiate a better board state. You oh, can yeah, invest in your health. Yeah. yeah, you can use your uh, hero power to kill two ones. I actually do like Druid here in this matchup more than Hunter. I think I agree. Okay, well, the Doomhammer is not bad, but I think the I think the Flame Tongue Tome is a little bit better here. And I think it's a lot better, actually, because... You might even consider the Rock Biter here, because you're getting repetitive damage. Mm -hmm. Do you think you should have put the totem with the other? Oh no, it doesn't matter how we were totem. It doesn't matter anymore. There's no your more. Your hero power is lost. Oh, crackle! This makes more sense, right? Then because you're taking the damage with rock butter, whereas with doom hammer you can also combo with rock butter for more damage. I, see. I like this. I like the crackle more. 
Wow. All so right. Is he going to have to Arcangle in to the... Oh, that's not the worst so play. Yeah, I think so, though. Dude, it still leaves the minion on board to trade. So hopefully the one mana doesn't matter as much going to here, but... I actually really like the LPS's spot in this game. Do you think he'll think trade? <laughs> uh oh. Uh, like, hero power, the... Use the Doom Hammer for the 4 2, but I guess not. <coughs> Why is that 28 against 16? That's a huge life differential. I just feel like this is going to play out like those face hunter mirrors, where even though one face hunter might be winning, the life differential is so hard to come back from. Yeah, it seems like that. I mean, if you combine any top decks, so this is kind of dead, but. With the hero power, you're doing six damage a turn, not even four damage a turn. How many six damage turns can you take? Like, just this is it next turn, pretty much, right? Yeah, VLPS just needs one decent draw to close out the game here. And that's assuming that. Um... No, I was gonna say this, this minion sticks, but now it's six without it. So... Yeah. Um, I think he has to play the creeper over a hero power and hope for a, a flame tongue draw, right? Um, maybe. I mean. Hero Power is actually worth more damage than Creeper, but Hunter Creeper can trade into minions, if that's a concern for him. Uh, this will put him at one. It's one off. Uh, yeah, you actually have to consider real guess here. No, actually, no. Wait, do you ever trade here? No, right? No. Alright, what does Muzzy need? Time. Muzzy Eight. needs a Rock Biter and a ridiculous roll from a Crackle. That's what he needs. Is that enough? Six plus. Yes. Okay. <laughs> it is enough, apparently. Oh, wow, that's unfortunate. He lost three games with his uh, shaman again. <laughs> wow, not happening for Muzzy. Muzzy ends shaman. I think it's one and seven record. Yeah, that's like the reason why he didn't get through this tournament because Muzzy was doing great with his other decks. I think. Mm -hmm. But I mean, it's a very similar shaman deck to the other ones. I mean, I think it's just. Yeah. Uh, just a high variance deck, and he got uh, <laughs> he got on on the on the bad side of that, I guess. Well, that yeah. will do it. VLPS goes through after losing the first match, through the losers round, through the deciders round, ends up being the second seed for tomorrow's finals. Make sure you guys do check those out. Um, and it should be pretty interesting. Uh, the players who qualified overall uh, from today, we had VLPS and Zele. And from yesterday, we had Dog and Lead Paint. So there are, those are going to be the, the four finalists moving into the, moving into the last day. And it should be pretty interesting. Um, a, lot of the, um, a lot of the players who played uh, non-standard decks made it through. So Dog probably had the most unusual setup. Um, VLPS, second most unusual setup, and Zele had a lot of tech choices that a lot of other players did not. Um, while Lead Paint, I think, is probably the only standard uh, standard list that ended up going through. Uh, so that's that's good to see. Uh, I, I do like to see when these players are rewarded, as I would hope that it encourages players in the future to maybe uh, you know put a bit more time to try to be a bit more experimental um, in in their tournament practice. So that's going to be it from us. Um, it's been great casting with you, Strife Crew. I hope you had fun. It was fun. It was fun. And I hope you guys do check out the stream tomorrow, as there will be quite a lot more. Uh, as we head off, again, I do encourage you guys to check out geico.onog.gg. Uh, you guys can see uh, what all the tournaments are going on. You guys can see the details of the event at PAX, if you guys uh, are going, or maybe it will sway you to go, um, as well as you can participate in uh, either the, the open tournaments, or you can participate in the giveaway for the, uh, the CyberPower PC. So check that out. Thank you guys so much for uh, checking out the tournament today, and I hope you guys see the rest tomorrow. See you guys.